So it's D and D night, and your PCs are wandering around some big ass ancient labyrinth, like the rampant murder hobos they are. And then bam, the rogue inevitably sets off some sort of trap. Everyone fails their saving rolls and gets hit, but nonetheless, they pick themselves up quickly and dust themselves off and move on. Right? Wrong. Sup, D and D bags. Today I'm talking about the wonderful, whimsical world of wounds, and I don't mean the damage die you roll after combat. I mean different types of wounds, abrasions, lacerations, punctures, avulsions, and burns, all of which can be lethal if not treated correctly. Unfortunately, the damage details of 5th edition is a little lacklustre, so it's up to you to, uh, pardon the pun, flesh out player wounds and injuries. So let's be real for a second. PCs can't just get a giant boulder dropped on their head and do some funky acrobatics check their next turn. So if the boulder is just a means to roll the damage die, then why bother making it a giant boulder, unless you're looking to add something more interesting to the damage you're doing to the PCs. So what? I hear you cry from the other side of your screen. Well, let's cover some real types of wounds that we can actually implement into D&D. So in real life, there are namely two types of wound, open and closed. An open wound is an injury involving a break in the body tissue, usually involving the skin. Falls and accidents with sharp objects or tools and car accidents are the most likely causes of open wounds in today's world, but within D&D, battles, traps and general tomfoolery are likely to be the main causes. Now with closed wounds, the skill is still intact and the underlying tissue is not directly exposed to the outside world, but just because the injury isn't exposed doesn't mean they aren't dangerous, as they can actually mean severe internal bleeding, large bruises, nerve damage, bone fractures and internal organ damage. Okay, so let's explore further the different types of open and closed wounds and see how we can apply them to different D&D scenarios. So incisions are usually caused by sharp edged objects, such as knives, razors or glass fragments. Cuts involving these objects are usually pretty precise and clean, with little to no tearing of the skin. Because of this, the treatment for them is relatively simple. One, keep it clean, so wash with water or a spirit based alcohol. 2. Stitch or glue the wound shut if needed, and 3. Wrap it in a clean bandage. Okay, so now we're going to move on to lacerations. Now, unlike incisions, lacerations are irregular tear-like wounds usually caused by blunt trauma. Essentially, any sword or axe swing is going to cause a laceration, as the cut is going to leave various parts still intact and will bruise. But a medically precise cut from a dagger or a tool would cause an incision instead. But if in doubt, go with laceration. Lacerations require similar steps to treat as incisions, but with a few added complications. Okay, so picture this. The barbarian went ham and has finally got a second to reflect on the wounds he sustained after the red mist has settled. It is not looking great. Sword lacerations all over his body and some are looking pretty deep, so he's feeling a little dizzy from blood loss. Medically speaking, or even on a survival level, the first priority should be to stop the bleeding by applying direct pressure on the affected areas. Deep lacerations can cause massive bleeding and can cut key arteries, which will kill you in a matter of minutes if not treated. So once the bleeding has been stemmed or stopped, you'll need to clean the wound using salt water, a spirit-based alcohol, or an antibiotic ointment, just like an incision. Then, depending on how deep the wound is, you'll need to stitch the wound and or wrap it in a sterile bandage. Now, doctors are usually overlooked in D&D because of the invention of magical healing, but if no one in the party is medically well trained, or shock horror, the healer is the one injured, you might actually have to seek out a doctor if the cut is too deep to stop the bleeding. If it's over a joint, or if you can't get the cut or laceration clean, you will also need to go to a doctor. By taking them to a medical professional, the doctor is also likely to address the main infection concern, tetanus. Nowadays, tetanus is a pretty rare occurrence due to the vaccination program across the world, but without this vaccination, it's going to be the bane of any wound or injury not cleaned properly. But what is tetanus? Well, the tetanus bacteria can survive for a long time outside the body and are commonly found in soil and the manure of animals such as horses and cows. Now, if this bacteria happens to enter the body through a wound or injury, it can quickly multiply and release a toxin that affects nerves, causing symptoms such as muscle stiffness and spasms. Now, these symptoms of tetanus are likely to develop 4 to 21 days after the infection. On average, they start around 10 days. The main symptoms actually include stiffness in your jaw muscles, such as locked jaw, which can make opening your mouth difficult, painful muscle spasms, which can make breathing and swallowing difficult, a high temperature, sweating, a rapid heartbeat, 
and left untreated, the symptoms can get worse over the following hours and days. Wait, 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 wait. Tom, you're telling me I have to think about all of this wound stuff every time the PCs flounder around in a dark room filled with D4s? No, you dingus, of course not. Simple wounds can be brushed off and healed with little or no thought, but the big stuff is what you really need to sweat. Look, I know D&D is set in a fantasy setting or whatever you've chosen, but back in the Dark Ages, a small cut could easily get infected and kill you. There were no antibiotics back in those days, and little in the way of hygiene. It also depends on how you see healing magic. Some people see it as a be-all and end-all, so it heals and disaffects everything and restores it back to how it once was, but this can get kind of stale since it can basically wipe away any wound without consequence. But if you see healing as a kind of sped-up natural healing process instead, these wounds can still have lasting effects on the players if not treated correctly. And who doesn't love a good old facial scar? Plus, the whole point of having consequences for large wounds will make your players think twice before jumping into the unknown, adding that extra layer of tension. It might also give them time to start thinking about other medical supplies than just the tag-along priest. Things like bandages, splints, tweezers, and torn case, you name it. Next up, we have abrasions. Now, abrasions are mostly superficial wounds in which the topmost layer of the skin is scraped off essentially a graze. They're often caused by a sliding fall onto a rough surface, and boy these are going to be really common in the rough and tumble world of D&D. So let's imagine a carriage chase, and one of the wheels uncouples from the cart, sending the party crashing into the hard road. Bam! Abrasions everywhere. Now abrasions can get really easily infected, because the bar floor that you've scraped across is usually a sticky putrid mess. So, as per all wounds, you need to clean the area thoroughly and remove any dirt or debris. Again, salt water, a spirit-based alcohol, or an antibiotic ointment with a dry dressing is the best way to treat it. Next, we have avulsions. Now, avulsions make up some of the ugliest injuries that you can come across, and they come with a high degree of infection. Avulsions are injuries in which the body structure is forcibly detached, and unlike amputation, the extremity is pulled off rather than cut off. Essentially, avulsions are chunks of tissue removed from the body, including at least all three layers of skin. In the modern world, they're commonly caused by ferocious animal attacks, industrial equipment, or road accidents. In D&D, avulsions can be caused pretty easily by the most massive creatures that catch PCs off guard. A whip of a dragon's tail might partially rip off an adventurer's leg, or the swipe of a hook horror's uh, hook might take a giant chunk of flesh from a PC's flank. But how do you treat them? Well, first you have to control the bleeding with direct pressure and elevation. Tourniquets may be used unless bleeding can't be controlled. Now, as raw as this sounds, PCs shouldn't be afraid to put direct pressure on a raw muscle or fat tissue. Use an absorbent clean dressing or whatever clean material is available for this. Then, the same with all wounds, it will need to be cleaned. So, rinsing it with water would probably be your best option here, as salt water and spirit-based alcohol is likely to make this worse. Now, if the tissue is not completely torn away, you're going to have to replace the flap and dress the wound. If the tissue is completely separated from the patient's body, you'll have to collect it, then bring it to a doctor or a healer in an attempt to reattach. Now, time is really key here to save the severed part. If you can keep it cool during transport, it will preserve it longer and stop it from decomposing. So, moving on quickly from the ugly world of avulsions, we'll move to puncture wounds. Puncture wounds are usually caused by an object puncturing the skin, such as a splinter, nail, or needle. In terms of D&D, this means arrows, throwing knives, and bolts. Let's say a disgruntled DM leads the players into an ambush, and now the party are full of arrows. They were lucky enough for the benevolent DM to let them live, but now they have a bunch of puncture wounds to tend to whilst on the run. Now with puncture wounds, you need to make sure that you remove the object, and check that the object is fully intact when you pull it out, and make sure any pieces have not broken off inside the wound. If there are any splinters, try using clean tweezers or a needle to fish them out, and be careful not to push the object further into the wound, and don't wet splinters as that will cause complications getting them out. Now it might surprise you that after you've pulled out the arrow, you're supposed to let it bleed freely for up to 5 minutes to allow the wound to clean itself out. And unless there's been a lot of blood loss or blood is squirting out the wound, then you won't have to tend to it immediately. Once you're confident you've got most of the debris out of the wound, you'll then have to actually stop the bleeding with direct pressure. And after you stop the bleeding, you'll then need to clean the wound, as usual, with salt water, spirit-based alcohol, or an antibacterial ointment. Bear in mind that the longer it takes to clean the wound, the larger the chance of infection, scarring, and tattooing of the skin from any debris left in the wound. Essentially, if the debris is not removed from the wound and the skin heals over it, then you're going to be able to see things under the skin which may look like a tattoo, 
Finally, you might need to consider applying a bandage. However, most puncture wounds don't actually need a bandage and will clot fairly easily by themselves. Um, so they won't need stitches, staples or skin adhesives either. However, nonetheless, you will still need to see a doctor about tetanus, which could still be a massive issue for infection. And finally, for open wounds, we're going on to gunshot wounds. Gunshot wounds, I hear you say. Now, guns aren't the most common items in D&D, but this applies to any fast-moving projectile that has the potential to drive into or through the body. Given the nature of these projectiles, there may even be two wounds, one at the site of entry and one at the site of exit. Now, depending on where you get shot can cause different complications. Now, if you get shot in the chest, for example, it can be particularly deadly because the wound can suck air in and actually lead to a collapsed lung. This can be countered by actually covering the open wound with a dressing. And don't forget, if they're lucky enough that it misses the heart and the lungs, you still have the spine at the back of the chest, so you need to be really careful about moving the person that's been shot. Now, if the patient is shot in the arms or the legs, you have to consider that the bone might have been injured, even shattered, which can cause rapid swelling as a sign of internal bleeding. Aren't wounds great? And we haven't even gotten to closed wounds yet. Either you're feeling nauseous or your head is filling with horrific ideas to unleash on your players. In the case of the latter, great. Now closed wounds have a few categories, but it can be just as dangerous as open wounds. The first type we're going to be covering are contusions. Now a contusion is a fancy word for basically a bruise. And bruises occur when injury damages the blood vessels under the skin, and they leak below the skin surface, usually causing a large purple lump. Now hematomas are a kind of injury where the small blood vessels and capillaries get injured, resulting in blood collecting and pooling in a limited space. What that actually means is it's present as a painful spongy, rubbery, lump-like lesion. And finally, the most relevant closed wound, crush injuries. Now, crush injuries are basically caused by high external pressure forces that squeeze part of the body between two surfaces. And the degree of injury and pain can range from a minor bruise to complete destruction of the crushed area. So, similar to open wounds, most closed wounds are treated in a similar way. And the main goal of the treatment is to control the pain and keep the bleeding and inflammation to a minimum. And this is usually done by using cooling packs, compression, elevation, immobilization of the limb or area. Now in a D&D &D setting, some of this is available to you and some isn't as easily available to you. So you have to just make do with what you can. Now if a bone fracture is suspected, it will require casting and the use of crutches and other walking aids may be prescribed to immobilize the injured limb or area. And these can be especially helpful for injuries to weight bearing sites to prevent further damage, reduce the pain and accelerate the healing. And don't forget a friendly tetanus shot as well, or doctor consultation. So I hope this video can help you add extra levity to your campaigns by adding a little spice in the way of wounds. And if you're looking for more D&D content, be sure to check out my Item of the Week series where I come up with weapons, armors, and items for your campaigns. And don't forget to subscribe for more juicy content.